a Netflix original film. The Wi-Fi is working. In the event of a global communications breakdown, do the following. Stay inside. What just happened here is happening everywhere. Avoid strangers. We've all been deserted. I don't trust them. And most importantly, do not panic. Julia Roberts. What happens next? Mahershala Ali. I knew something was coming. Leave the world behind. Rated R. In select theaters now and on Netflix December 8th. Today on CityCast Denver. Between the holiday markets and New Year's Eve parties, there are tons of cool things going on around Denver this month. But how do you make the most of it all? That's why me and producer Olivia Jewel Love are here to share our best bets for your Denver December. Today is Wednesday, December 6th. I'm Bree Davies, and here's what Denver's talking about. Producer Olivia Jewel Love, good morning. Good morning, Bree. How are you today? Today. <laughs> <laughs> How are you today? I'm great. Uh, it, we're in the midst of my favorite time of the year. Yes. So the Bree season. I'm a, I'm a holiday girly. Oh, she's a holiday girly. <laughs> <laughs> are you a holiday girly? I'm a anytime festive girly. If there is mm. something to be celebrated, I'm here. If there's okay. a theme, I'm here. Decorations, yes. It's true. You are the aesthetics queen. I love festive. I love festive. So yes, I love it. It's great. Will you really quick tell me about your Advent sock? Yes. Yes. So every year since I've been like, I don't know how old, a child, childhood, my aunt has made me a customized Advent calendar makes it she makes it this like string of stockings so they're these little socks and every day I open a sock and it's a little it's a little present and so, you know like the advent calendars are often yeah. like chocolate or whatever but she puts a present in every one so it's just a little thing that she finds for me it's but she does it all year long she collects like little things oh that you know she thinks I would like so it's just the most personal and nice it's, it's, tradition. The, it's amazing it's the best part of december i love it it's honestly the nicest thing <laughs> i like this take on an advent calendar oh. what's your aunt's name katie you gotta give her aunt katie shout out aunt katie i have i have cool aunts too aunt karen aunt aaron aunt kelly what's up aunt shout Barbara. out to them yeah I, I just wanted to talk a little about tradition because well, like when I was going through uh, the calendar, trying to find things, looking at like, what would I want to do this month? I was thinking about traditions, building in traditions for Montgomery, you know? So that's kind of what I, my mindset going into this. Um, so we're just going to be sharing our top three things we found or we've decided are the thing we really want to do this month in December. Let's start with your picks. What's your first one, Olivia? Yes. So... This one I got the privilege to cover last year when I was working at Colorado Community Media um, up in one of my favorite places, Georgetown, G-Town, G-Town girly. Uh, G-Town. <laughs> um, so we're going to go to the Georgetown Christmas Market. Um, this I, this is a magical Christmas market because you are up there in the mountains. It is snowy. Georgetown is just such a whimsical little town and is right in the heart of it. So um, we've the first weekend has already happened. So the second weekend is happening this weekend, December 9th and 10th. And um, it's the 63rd annual one. And so there wow. I know it's been happening for a long time and it's free admission and they have horse drawn carriages. They have a children's procession um, from St. Lucia's. Lucia's? Lucia's? I don't know. Latin Latin <laughs> moment. But um, they have this children's procession where the kids walk with like little costumes and they walk. And Santa comes and there's live music, food and all these amazing vendors from all over Colorado that have handmade goods, you know, crafts, all sorts of things. I went last year to cover it and I also got a big big chunk of my Christmas shopping done, found so many amazing, unique gifts from artisans all over the state and just super unique stuff and really, really mm. like quality gifts. I love this recommendation because Georgetown's less than an hour drive on I-70. So it's totally doable. 
any, you know what I mean? You can go up there for the day. You can go up for a couple hours. Also, it kind of sounds like a Hallmark. It town. is. It is 100% you know what I mean? your Hallmark day. And, you know, there's there's lots more to do up there, too. When I went up last year, I made sure to hit up the little Georgetown Coffee and Tea when I was there. It's a nice little coffee shop right in the heart of where Cute. everything's happening. And if you're lucky enough to get tickets to the Georgetown Loop Railroad, shout out to them. Oh, yeah. They know I love them. Um, they have a holiday train where you can see lights and stuff on the train. Whimsical. So good. Love it. It's just the most Christmassy thing you could do. And it's it's super close and accessible and just straight shot up I-70. So worth it. So if you want like the immersive mountain yes. town Christmas experience, Georgetown is your spot. Yep. And less than an hour away. So perfect. Okay. What's your next pick? So another fun kind of mountainy one um, is Ice Fest happening in Evergreen. So this one's, this one's even closer, but you're still going to get that taste of Hallmark um, that is important to me for my Christmas time. So I love I love being around like snow and the little like lodgy looking stuff. So Evergreen, you know, is super close, but it's, super close. it still feels like a little slice of the mountains, even though yeah. it's like 30 minutes away. So Ice Fest happens on New Year's Eve on December 31st from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at Evergreen Lake. And so this is like a family event. Um, there's it's There's no like alcohol happening. So this is ice skating, hockey, broom ball, all this stuff is happening on Evergreen Lake. The cool thing about Evergreen Lake is that it's the largest outdoor Zamboni groomed ice skating rink in North America. <laughs> Fun fact, kind of random, but it's all, so it gets it gets treated it as gets, yes. indoor ice rinks do in terms of like the Yes, it is groomed, groomed okay. but it's a lake and you can go with everyone of all ages and it's 30 bucks per person for ages 4 and up four and up um kids three and below is free and skate rentals for kids is 10 bucks a kid um and it's just gonna be a fun day with like you know food trucks and did you say broom ball earlier is that like yeah hockey? i i don't exactly know i'm pretty sure it's <laughs> like i i think it's like hockey but i honestly think it's with like brooms um mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a question for our listeners so just a just another close one that's fun for the family and if you if you're not a drinker and you want to do something kind of wholesome on new year's eve this is love it a great a great way to spend your day i love it okay what's your last pick okay so my last one this is this is a very olivia one um a little bit out of left field <laughs> but you know what I like. we're we're rolling with it so this this is kind of a tradition for me. So for listeners who don't know, um, I, in addition to my journalism background, I also happen to have a Latin degree, um, right. kind of kind of <laughs> random. Um, so something I did when I was studying Latin when I was young was we did a celebration of the <gasps> Roman holiday Saturnalia, and so. Oh. Saturnalia is the like ancient Roman pagan celebration for the god of agriculture and time, Saturn. And so this this holiday, Romans spent celebrating. So instead of working, they would gamble, sing, play music, feast, socialize, and give each other gifts. So like all the best parts of the holidays was what Saturnalia was to the Romans. And we got a lot of modern holiday traditions from this so we got like sure. the ideas of like wreaths candles feasting and gift giving all came from this holiday from like you know saturnalia so um just like a little bit more history on it um in the late republic like 133 through 31 bc it had expanded to a week-long festival beginning on december 17th and so like the calendars are a little a little um different from our calendar sure. um sure. but so like that was when the winter solstice was on december 25th so it's just around basically december 17th a week i'm suggesting you spend at least a day celebrating saturnalia with your friends and family how are you doing this uh so what i've done in the past is i've celebrated secret saturn with my friends and family, this is a great way to connect <laughs> a secret to, Santa? to connect with your friends. If you have like friends of different backgrounds, friends who are not religious, you want to keep it pagan, keep it secular, <laughs> secret Saturn. So you're going to just like your secret Santa or whatever you want to call it, get each other, you know, pull names out of a hat, get different gifts 
for each other, whoever you pick. And then, you know, make it your own. Go after these these ancient ideas of singing, being festive, playing music, feasting, socializing, and just having a great time and just, you know, enjoying each other's company just in the spirit of history and enjoying that. So that's my that's my bid for enjoying Saturnalia. enjoying a festive day without having to you know, have any ties to any religion or anything because we're all a part of history. So try it. It's fun. I have I have to say when you said you brought up your Latin degree, I was like, oh, maybe <laughs> we're going to go to Latin mass. Nope. There's, nope. The there's opposite. There's some Catholic church that <laughs> I know. do mass in Latin here. My they favorite do. Our lady of Mount Carmel does it. But they do. this is the sort of the opposite. This is actually the opposite. We're going to keep it pagan. <laughs> we're going to keep it pagan. But I just want everyone to have an option to gather with their people and I like it. just celebrate the season, the end of the, the year season. Celebrate yourself. The new beginning. Treat yourself. Treat yourself. Yes. So that is what Saturnalia is all about. And I think it'll be really fun. So let me know if you, if you do it, let me know. Cause yeah, if you have any Saturnalia, uh, traditions, maybe that you've started or something you'd like to add to this new style canon of it. You can always give us a call on the DIY Saturnalia hotline, <laughs> 720-500-5418. In general, too, your holiday traditions uh, for the end of the year, the ways that you celebrate the end of this year and the beginning of the next. Um, I love that thought. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, more picks for your December. This episode is brought to you by My Denver Therapy. My Denver Therapy is one of the largest woman and therapist owned private practices in Colorado. Their therapists have helped thousands of clients throughout the Denver area using proven therapy methods that work. In-person therapy is available in Denver, Greenwood Village and Lone Tree, all off I-25, but they do teletherapy too. Because they have a team of therapists, they match clients with a therapist who specializes in you, whether you're an adult, teen, couple, or family. My Denver Therapy is also one of the leading providers of ketamine-assisted therapy, EMDR, and internal family systems therapy in Colorado. To get matched with a therapist and schedule an appointment, visit MyDenverTherapy.com or search My Denver Therapy to find a location near you. Oh, and as a special gift from us, you can mention CityCast to get $20 off your first session. Just visit MyDenverTherapy.com. This episode is brought to you by the Denver Center for the Performing Arts. Because the DCPA Theater Company is back with Denver's beloved holiday tradition, A Christmas Carol. It is a joyous and opulent musical adaptation of Charles Dickens' classic ghost story, tracing curmudgeon Ebenezer Scrooge's triumphant overnight journey to redemption. Broadway World says this production is a, quote, splendidly festive tradition that illuminates the meaning of the holiday season in a way that has resonated for generations. It's a cla- I mean, it is a classic. It's... It's the story that makes you think about why the Christmas season matters. And it's really about equal pay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Tickets range from $40 to $150. So come early and save. Don't miss a night filled with music, magic, and miracles. Live on stage at the Wolf Theater through December 24th. Tickets on sale now at denvercenter.org. And we're back. We're talking about our favorite things, traditions, new and old things to do this December in and around Denver, in the metro area, and even into the mountains. Olivia, you had some great picks. I just, you've given me so many ideas. Well, I'm excited to hear what you've brought to the table, Bray. Let's let's get it rolling. Uh, My first pick is Saturday Night Lights in Cherry Creek North. It's happening um, Saturday, December 9th. So this coming Saturday, as well as December 16th. It's from 5 to 7 p.m. It's free. It's in Cherry Creek North. They have uh, between first and second on Fillmore is sort of this bricked street. It's like then they they block it off for various events throughout the year. But it's it's just like. It's they have a a pop up bar, the mistletoe bar, so you can stay warm. But they also have a giant like lit up disco dance floor and they have DJs. They have ballerinas, living statue performers, uh, a 40 foot tunnel of lights, a free photo booth and you get a free keepsake photo. (gasps) You get an actual photo, which is what I love. Complimentary hot chocolate holiday treats. 
I loved this because, A, I'm going to be at the mall probably anyway. This is just a walk. You can literally cross First Avenue and come right into the Saturday Night Lights event. So we may be at the mall seeing Santa. And then you can come over and kind of just like have a little party. It's it's only from 5 to 7. So it's not before it gets super cold, which I like. Um, and it's just – it's for all ages. It's a – it's a spot. And then you can hang out. They also have a market. So if you want to do some shopping with local artisans here, they have that going on too. And I don't know. This was just like a two birds with one stone for me. I'm already going to be in Cherry Creek. Why not go have a little party outside? That sounds perfect. And like way yeah. to draw people in, you know, oh. show up for that and then stay for a Santa visit, a hit, yeah. a, hit another bar. It sounds like the perfect, the perfect draw. Totally. There's bars in Cherry Creek. Honestly, I might, we might go to Cherry Cricket after this for yeah. dinner, to be honest <laughs> with you, because we'll be right over there. But um, yeah, I'm super wow, excited. And I just, I don't know. I love Cherry Creek North, yeah. even though it's changed. It's still, it's still f- have fond memories of Sounds it Sounds super me. festive. So, love it. Yeah. Um, my next one, I think you're super going to be into. <laughs> Uh, aura readings at Terra Apothecary <gasps> with Ignite Your Aura. So aura photography, this is how they explain it on the website. I've had these photographs done before myself when I was in the new age capital of the known universe, also a portal, Sedona, Arizona. So if you haven't been there, Olivia, I think you would really like it. I, that's yeah, a that's a separate road trip. <laughs> I haven't really spent time in Arizona, so. Oh, the, the Southwest. Well, I'll give you some. <laughs> okay, but, okay. Um, so this one is happening at Terra Apothecary, which is on South South Broadway. And Aura Photography utilizes our bioelectric feedback to measure and interpret our energetic bodies. It offers new perspective on our current world, the inner work we have been cultivating, and new directions to explore. So not only do you get your uh, aura photograph taken by this um, woman who goes by Ignite Your Aura, she does a little intuitive reading of it and interprets the colors for you. Oh, so, my God. This is so cool. I know. This is like one of those things. I'm really a New Year's person. I really love to like get a nice journal, start ne- not necessarily with resolutions, but just like thoughts for the next year. And this is I, I do like I'll do a tarot reading with my friend or, you know, I have a lot of like traditions that I like to do around the new year. And I think this would be one I'd like to do is get my aura read before the beginning oh of the my God. new year. It sounds perfect. I mean, you mentioned you mentioned the journal. Every time I start a new endeavor in anything, I I have the extreme need to start a new journal. I'm like, oh, right, <laughs> new new anything, new journal. And I love the same way. I my friend Erica does a tarot reading for me. Like every time I see her, just anything oh, will be. That's a good I'll friend. be saying something, and she'll be like, well, let's pull cards. Like let's see. So I could totally see taking her to this and doing oh, that together. So what are what are the dates that this is running? So it's uh, the 29th and the 30th. So it's right at the end of the year. It's right before New Year's. Um, and you do, uh, we'll put a link in the show notes, but you do need to make, you need to re- reserve your okay. spot because they it's it's one woman. So you only have a certain amount right. of spots per day. But um, it's a Terra Apothecary. Again, also a store you're going to love. Yes. They've got, uh, you know, sage bundles, different teas. They're, they have all these uh, tinctures. They can make teas for you. And they have a lot of cool, honestly, I got a really nice greeting card the other day. It's one of those stores where you can get a solid card. So yeah, so we'll put a link in the show notes because you want to make sure you get a reservation and um, how much I can't remember how much it is, but you can sign up and you get to take your you get to take your photograph awesome. home and have a little thought for yeah. the new year. What a great way to start the year! Love it totally. Um, my last pick is for kids. This is something that I've written about a lot in the past as an arts reporter. Like every year, this happens, and I've not had a reason to go because I didn't have a kid. And then he he's like two and a half. This is the perfect age where he's like really cognizant of what's going on. So it's called Noon Year's Eve. It's December 31st from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And it's at the Children's Museum. And it's basically a New Year's Eve party for kids during the day. This is the cutest thing. They have a ball drop every hour. Aww. So it doesn't matter what time you get there. Your kid can still experience like the countdown which I love. That's smart. They need to do that for adults. I swear every year I miss the ball drop because I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm just talking. I'm just messing around with my friends and we're like, oh crap, we missed it. It's like, I swear every year we miss it. We're like, oh dang it. We missed it again. Or it'll be like an hour after midnight. Like, crap, we missed it. So I know. So you could, this is, let's float this idea for everyone. <laughs> Take it from More the ball drops. Museum. Like, Lots of ball drops. I I love it. That's also so fun. I think it's great to have a way to 
get the kids in on the fun and especially yeah have it have it early so then you know they're not starting the new year off just super grouchy by staying well, up late. most kids are not like my child who will be up till 1 a.m your baby stays up late but i was he's on a you know he's a musician schedule but i think the other thing that's cool about this is so they have the the ball drop every hour they have a live dj they have <gasps> snacks and then they open up this um special outdoor arena sort of thing that they do at the children's museum throughout the winter season and it's called snow days so they have a sledding hill with real snow but they also have an outdoor sock skating rink so you wear like slippery booties and you skate on like a slick surface so anybody can do it because you're not balancing on skates but you're still getting to like skate around oh, this, I was like, this is dang i want to come idea. this is fun i know Dang, I'm going to like put my cat in like some shoes and like little <laughs> jeans. They're like, oh, no, this is my son. <laughs> like, are you sure? Like, yeah, he just doesn't talk yet. It's fine. He's in a – you could just – oh, my God, just put your cat in a stroller. People do that all the time. Be like, he doesn't Perfect. want to get out. He's shy. Anyway, I'm going to go skating. Bye. <laughs> taking a nap. Well, your cat might like – they have an ice house with a, 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 quote, fishing hole. Oh, so yes. Maybe he'd be into that. He would totally be into that. Tickets start at 16 bucks. Again, this is this is New Year's Eve day from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Children's Museum. Um, the doors open at 9, and I would just say – from past experience, Children's Museum is banging off the hook busy. Get there at 9 a.m. Okay. I would I would get there as soon as so possible. So I should cause... I should camp out. You should <laughs> Okay. I'll I'll get the I'll get the tent set up. Me and the cats. Just camp out with your cat. Me and the cats will just we'll start a little fire in front of the <laughs> I love it. Cool. Well, I think we came up with a good diverse array of things to do. If whether you're a Christmas person, a holiday person, a winter person, a winter mountains person, a Saturnalia person. Yes. So many you options. There's an you. option for everyone here. So don't don't say you don't know what to do this winter because we just gave you six things to do. We got you covered. We got you covered. Well, Olivia, thanks for joining me. This is really fun. Yes. Thank you as always. And finally, a correction to something we talked about on yesterday's episode. We were talking about RTD's final report from the two-year Zero Fare for Better Air project, but we got one of our calculations wrong. The free fare period did not lead to a 10% reduction in daily driving, as we thought the report was saying. Instead, it's more like an estimated 0.17%. We'll put a link to learn more in our show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Denver. If you enjoyed the show, why not take a minute to tell Santa Claus about us? Rate the show wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our morning newsletter and learn more about us at denver.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. See you later. You're like, please tell me more about your personal digestive issues.